Well, today was another uh, sick day, so she's actually here, but I'll still be, uh, be first and quick, I guess. Um, so mostly just working on stuff for the, uh, the fundraising effort um, in terms of some assets and such. Um, <clears throat> and then getting ready, we have two big CM meetings tonight um, to go over their quotes. So that'll be like my entire evening. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's about all I'm up to. So yeah, sorry if I'm kind of absent from uh, the skill side of things. So if you guys need any, any help on anything, ping me. No, we're fine. I'm fine for right now, at least. Okay. That's fine. I can go next. Um, I got the uh, wiki skill converted to the Common Query framework and put up a pull request for that and uh, waiting for Gez's review. And I started looking at the pull request for adding um, video to the common play skill, but I'm confused because that's a, it's just weird. It's, there's changes to core, there's changes all over the place. Some of them it looks like have emerged, some of them haven't. I'm not sure what to make of that pull request. So I'm- No, to, cl to clarify, it's, it's adding the capability to play video to core. Currently, we don't no, have- Not any... just common place, but other things that need to be touched but why, to make that but, happen. But that's what's confusing to me. I mean, if, if VLC is already supported in common play framework, it plays videos. Why, why did core have to change? We we don't have like if you're a if you're a random skill like yep. that just wants a GUI, you should be able to in my mind you should be able to play a video, you know, as part of your experience. That's not necessarily part of the, the common play service. Because you know, imagine you're not actually playing a video in the sense of, you know, you're playing um uh the a video you know a music video clip to go along with music but you're just playing video you know imagine um your uh well the the um the meditation example that i gave the other day like imagine you're doing that and you want to play a video that like shows people a particular meditation technique so you want to you just want to play video <laughs> as as a part but of your my skills. point is why can't but why wouldn't you play video through the common play framework because why would you want to be able to do it yourself? I thought we were trying to push everybody to kind of be common play or in certain cases, common query oriented. Um, so giving giving skills the ability to play video outside of the common play, play framework kind of seems counter to what we're trying to do unless I'm missing something. Well, I think there's two. I feel like there's two things. There's we need to me, the common play framework is around disambiguating particular utterances that use the word play or similar things. Um, and we need a separate, separately, we need a way for Mycroft to know what is being played audibly and what is being shown on the screen and what is, yeah, what is being played audibly and what's being shown on the screen. Um, I think those are two... I see those as slightly separate. Well, I, I, where I'm confused is common play skills don't play their own audio. They go through the common play framework to play it, correct? Yes. Why wouldn't they go through the common play framework to play videos? I think they would if they're a common play skill. Then I'm confused as to why changes in core need to be hand, uh, made to handle playing a video. Well, when you would, my understanding that was that there was no way to play video previously. Like even for the common play skill, you couldn't call. But I could be wrong if I, I'm happy to be wrong. No, I'm not. I'm not saying the common play framework supports video today. I'm saying it supports audio, and I think it should support video in the same manner. Mm -hmm. This seems oh, like. So the code to support video is, is different than the code to support audio. Is that you're saying? No, like what I'm... architecture. No, no, that's what that's what I'm saying is not the case. In other words, there's no difference between having common play play the audio and having common play play the video. 
But it seems like for some reason changes had to be made to core, and I'm not sure why. So that that's all I was questioning. Um, if it's the case that I mean, some of those changes to core are GUI related, and I completely get that. But you know, you would think that if you're a commonplace skill, then you would basically say play a video the same as you would say play an audio. You would say stop a video the same as you would say stop an audio. And I don't see any reason for you to be able to go around the common play framework to do so. Well, again, I, I see I see those two different use cases. Like, you know, that, that there are going to be things outside of common play that play video. Just like there are things... And there'll be play. things outside of common play that play audio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's, and, it's, this to me is similar to what we were talking about with Project Rollover. Like, you know hey, we want to just insert this dumb wave file into the skill to give them some extra instructions. I mean, that could also be a video, right? That could be a video instruction. Yeah, I... It wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily need to be part of common play. I mean, it might have some functionality, I suppose, in terms of pause and play and all that, but it might just be a snippet of a video dropped into the skill that's kind of not even really interactive, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm not protesting too much. I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense that common play can call into core to play a, an audio or a video file. But it just seemed like common play already had the ability built in to play audio files, and I wasn't sure why it wouldn't just have the same capability for video. And then if it was going to do that by simply launching VLC player or some other type of video player, why any changes to core to facilitate that would be necessary at all. That's all I was questioning. It just confused me. Mm. But again, I'm not sure of the state of the pull request. I don't know what's been merged, what's not, what's been, you know, where it's at. Uh, so, you know, it's it's got some history there. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, one of the problems I think that we have is if if things play audio, like play media without Mycroft knowing about it, then it limits what we can, you know, our ability to know the state of the system. It, it limits. That's how, but that's how common play audio works today. No. Well, but that's a problem. I think. Ah, I see. Yeah. Okay. Per well, that's personally, I think that's a problem. That's why you're confusing me because I'm looking at an existing architecture and I'm seeing people pulling away from that and saying, why? And your response is maybe it's the wrong architecture in the first place. But per personally, I think we need a system a service in Minecraft core that knows that is in in control of i guess you'd say in control of the media that is playing and that the common play service would use that and skills would use that rather than them you know playing audio and video directly okay and i believe that's how it is today with audio i believe it uses the audio service to play audio hmm but things can just things can just play stuff themselves. Well, but not if you're trying to give Mycroft control over the environment and know what's going on. So then you should go through Mycroft services. So if there's an audio service and Common Play uses it, there should be a video service and Common Play should use it for all of the same reasons. Yes. We want Mycroft to be aware of what's yeah. playing at one time, right? And be able to handle at a system level yeah whether we just... whether we want an audio service and a video service and then have to interact between them or whether we want a an integrated audio media. service that also supports video yeah like a media a media service but i didn't see that in this pull request was i missing something no it's not in this pull request but isn't that the way it should be well this this seems like a step towards that because you know whatever does it if there's going to need to be a way to you know play video but why not just put it in the audio service as a separate entry point and be done with it? I mean, that that's valid feedback if that's the you know what you want to say. Um, okay, okay. I just could put it in the audio service. I don't know. You got to be careful because when on you start having an audio service that does things besides play audio, and that's going to get confusing. Yeah, yeah. So my point is that I should probably rename the audio service audio video service, but then that'll break a bunch of shit. So we can just know by convention it's the audio video service. <laughs> well, and this is this is where the specs come into play, which is where we're, you know, we're trying to get to them, but they're also very large bodies of work. So, 
Um, I feel like if there are if there are steps that we can take towards that, that are not in the wrong direction, that provide, you know, a degree of functionality, then that seems like a good thing in my books. Um, I don't disagree with that, but the reality is the adding the ability to play a video to the audio slash video service is not a lot of work. Well, and, and if it's the case that that's the direction we want to take, then we should just probably do it and be done with it. Before I thought it was we, added to a, a new sort of playback namespace. Is that? But it's been a very know. long time since I, I looked know. at the PR. I'm gonna so. need to into, yeah, I'm going yeah. to need to comment on the PR. So I guess that's where I'm at. But um, yeah, I mean, I agree. I think the audio service should be the audio video service. It should have an entry point. Commonplace should rely on it. And it should work the same way as audio does, except that it actually plays visualized stuff as well as audio. Mm. But it should still respond to start and stop commands. It should still be handled by the common play intents. And, you know, my concern is we don't want to, you know, if we know that's the case and we know we want to be there and that's the right design and it's not that big a deal to add that capability, then before people start going off and coding up to a different interface or a different way of doing things, since we don't have a lot of video skills out there right now, maybe now is the time to bite the bullet. Sure, sure. Anyway, I'm researching that. I don't have... I don't know the answer because I'm still evaluating and this conversation gave me more food for thought. So I guess my point is there's a wiki skill that's been converted to common play that needs to have a pull request that I reviewed on it. And I'm looking at the pull request for adding video to the system. Cool. That's my <laughs> next customer. <laughs> well, and I might go and comment on the, on the PR um, as well to make sure that we, we are tying things back to the spec because if we're not, if there's not a clear, indicator about how things are tied in with the the broader direction that we're going then then that's not very useful either so well what i can tell you is that the i'm a fan of the common play framework and the common query framework i understand now the rationale the raison d'etre um and it's good stuff and it's and it's correct um you know basically what you're doing is you're moving intents out of the skills and putting them in common like common play intents handle it and that's wonderful. The less intents that are active at any given point in time, the better the recognition accuracy is going to be, number one. And number two is it forces everybody to comply to a similar interface for things that do similar things. Not to mention the fact that I dropped the wiki skill size by 50% just by porting it to common query because it's just the query return the confidence level and, oh, by the way, give me the data and I'll figure out which one to play. Most of that stuff's being done up in the common query-based class. In fact, that was a concern too, although it addressed a concern I had, albeit I don't know the right way, which is what if skills just return their own high confidence levels and starved everybody off? Ain't going to happen in the common play framework because they're all using and bound to the same calculation value algorithm because it's in the base class. So that's, that was interesting. But yeah, I mean, I, I have appreciation for them now. I understand what they do, and I, I think it was a good direction to go. I don't see any problem with it. Um, and, you know, I think moving forward, we should be encouraging people to use those frameworks for query skills and for audio and video skills because, um, you know, it's just, it's goodness. So, yeah, I just want to do the right thing with this GUI and the, um, and the video playing. And uh, I'm not sure how to button all that up. But, uh, yeah, uh, the spec you speak to uh, is the common play spec. Uh, and there's an integrated media playback spec. Anyway, Where might that be? I'll, I'll, I'll add them as comments yeah, to the Yeah, PR. dig it up and, and chat me a uh, link so I can read it. Yeah, yeah. And, and then I'll continue my review because I don't want to get impetuous and make fur of the moment decisions, but... I'm just trying to look at things and say, if this is where we're going and it's going to cost me an extra four hours, then let's just do it and bite the bullet and be done. I don't know that that's the case. I'm just thinking that way. So yeah, we'll yeah. take it from you. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, since I'm already talking, uh, I uh, did some more font stuff. Um, uh, I'm thinking that we just remove Noto Sans display and, you know, if anything breaks for people... I don't even, it, it's not even in stable yet anyway, right? Um, oh, that's not true. The font exists in stable. Anyway, I think we just 
remove it now and and if people are relying on Noto Sans display then uh, it will break but the whole point is that they're dev kits so it's it's going to break a little bit um but we now have Noto Sans as per Derek's uh, request as the default font um and I'll add in Noto Serif and Noto Sans Mono so that we have a complete um range of fonts that are going to be relatively consistent um uh, I updated the pairing skill, and I think that it might have been the only one that, that was hard-coded. Um, and so that should now use the system default. Um, uh, so just need to do some testing on that. Um, yeah, I've been getting back and, uh, and trying to get some of the um, feature branches that we've been using on the Mark II dev kits um, into the marketplace so we can stop doing this sort of manual um injection of a of a feature branch during build time um still unfortunately seeing some failures in voight conf that i thought were going to be fixed with the 2102 release which is they seem to be having less often but still happening um which is quite disappointing um and uh, what else? Yeah, I can't remember. Uh, the last yesterday's audio didn't work, so um, uh, need to I fix that. But there won't be any um any dev syncs for the last couple of days. So, uh, sorry about that, everyone. But you should be <laughs> listening to this if you're hearing my apology. So there you go. Uh, anyway, that's me, Chris. Yeah, so I'm still knee deep in intents. Um, I talked to Sean uh, yesterday, who was the author of Adapt, um, and he agreed to go over a document I'm putting together that is basically my understanding of Adapt <laughs> and how it works. So that he can, you know, uh, sanity check it for me, and make sure I'm not making any bad um, guesses or decisions on on what's going on. Um, so I'd like to have that document um, available for anybody to look at who has, you know, wants to know about adapter um, and how it works. So um, that's taken a little time to put the document together. It, it's more detailed than what I put in Confluence last time. And um, I actually corrected a few uh, misconceptions I have the first time I went through Adapt. <laughs> um, so uh, it's, it's a better document. Um, so hopefully, um, you know, I'll send that over to Sean. And uh, it may take him a little while to get to it because he's super busy right now. But hopefully, it won't take too long. And we can, you know, I'll probably get, get OK. I'll just ask him to take a peek at it as well. Um, so and of course, the team, if you guys want to look at it, I'll, I'll share a link to it too. What was your core issue, though, that you had pedacious, high confidence, intense, stealing your intents? Uh, well, that was one issue. And actually, I just found a different issue. Um, so I was, I was trying to, to change the date time scale to use an adapt intent instead of a pedacious intent for um, future time. And when I did that, um, I was getting the current time back a lot, which I thought was strange. So I dug some more into it and I think I found a bug in, I don't know if I'd call it a bug in adapter, a bug in core, but it's a bug in how intents can be handled. So adapt, when it parses an utterance, it parses it into one to many, uh, damn dog. Keep going, boy. <laughs> one to many what? <laughs> one to many barking dogs. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so it, 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 one of many permutations of the words in the utterance. So, for example, in one parsing result, it can, it, you know, it could be what is. And then in the other parsing result, it could just be what. You know, depending on what's in like these these vocabulary files, right? 
It's trying to match to that. So in the case of a, a request for a future time, there are several of these permutations I went through. Um, and so what it does is it calculates the confidence of each of these permutations. And my, my guess is, at least in theory, the best of all of that is what you would present back as this is the best intent. But what's really happening is we're looping through these permutations. And then what core does is it takes the first of the permutations, perhaps assuming that's, you know, it was returned in some, in some, in some uh, confidence order, takes the first one and just uses that, even if a future per permutation is, has a better uh, confidence than the first permutation does. So in this case, the very first permutation of um, the utterance was a, a current time request. Now the future time request that I wrote, or the intent that I wrote, had a better confidence. But since it was processed lower, you know, further down in the list, it wasn't even considered by core. Is that all? Am I making sense so far? No. So, so you said that. No, but I think I understand what you're saying. I'm just questioning. So you're saying that when you got back your list of intent matches, that since they're not ordered by confidence level, if it takes the very first entry every time, it's not getting the highest confidence value out of that list. Is that correct? Kind of, because there's there's like a couple of loops through these that it goes through. One, so each permutation goes through a best intent check. So for yeah. that permutation, you know, and each time you go through a permutation, it goes through every single intent um, to find out what the best one for that permutation is. Well, hold so, on before we go any further. Permutation being what? Some sort of extrapolation on like words, like, you know, like yeah. a conjugate so, verb. So if somebody said run, it also looks at ran, running, things like this. No, it's taking different chunks of this of the utterance. So maybe he doesn't agree. I guess not. Maybe... <laughs> so maybe one 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 query dot vocabulary file could say what, and another query dot vocabulary file could say what is. Yeah, those are different permutations of the same utterance that need to be considered. Well, um, what is should always return, if somebody said what is it should return a higher confidence level than what? Yes, but but the but the parser will return the what in in one set of um, of intent checks and the what is in a different set of intent checks because it's a different. So each time it, it it combines the words of an utterance in a different way, it's a different set of checks. But the intent is the summation of all of them. It's the highest confidence of the set of all the vocabulary files first required and then optional. So it should favor. In know, theory, options. yes. Yeah. But because different skills can define vocabulary files in different ways, you can, you can have, um, you know, one permutation of the of the utterance score differently than different permutation of the utterance depending on how your vocabulary files files are defined. Sure. So, in this case, um, you know, I, if I say, "What will the time be in ten minutes?" Yes. Right. Um, the what and the time um get pulled in they, oh that that's a that's a current time query right are you missing will in your vocabulary in your intent builder no 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 because the first time it goes through it it says oh well i have what in time that's a current time and i have a confidence of 0. 0.34 right and it it spits that back to core and core takes that well later on another permutation it says oh I have what and time as and will and and in this duration that's that's a future time and it's got a point four yeah um, but but cores already consumed the point three five as a good one. How's that happen? Well, I mean, it, it's difficult to explain because I mean, you really have to understand how adapt kind of goes through this, you know, and the way the different ways it loops through these and vocabulary files and intents.
Well, but, we can back off and just point it out that that's a bug. If you say what will time, and that matches what time high, with a higher confidence than what will time, that's a oh, bug. bug. That's what I'm saying. It's it's a bug. Yeah, that's a um, bug. Yeah. So, and I think the bug is that you know when you have these multiple permutations of you know how an utterance gets grouped, you know, the words and utterance get grouped together. You need to figure out what the best of all those permutations are before you send anything back to core. Either that or core needs to figure out what the best of all those are. There's a step missing, I think, is what what it is. Yeah. So the question yeah, is somebody, like whether it should be returned in it, whether whether adapt should be returning at all in in a in a sorted confidence list, or yeah. whether whether core should be um, handling that better. But it sounds like that's what you're digging yeah, into. Yeah. What next. I don't know is, it, is why we're returning all these things to core when really, if, to me, it, to me, adapt should be saying this is the best. Well, there shouldn't be minute. another task in core that says, well, that's it. This is the best, but I'm going to do this other check. And, you know. <laughs> well, I hear you there, but that would be a, a significant change. But point being that, like Gez said, um, if it's the case that you're getting back a list and it's not in sorted order and the code's taking the first one, somebody needs to sort it before the code takes the first one, and that would make that problem go away. Yeah, the problem is is that it's a, in, in adapt. It's a they're using a yield statement, so it's like a generator. It's not <laughs> a list. Um, to basically, and then core takes that the results of that yield statement and does a list comprehension on it and just throws it in whatever order the yield statements come in. And so, um, so yeah. Well, yeah, so, and I, mean, I think I, I think it's important that we clarify. Yeah, you know, what is the intent? <laughs> <laughs> for want of a better word, what's the, what is the, you know, what's the contract that we're, that, that adapt is delivering to consu to consumers of adapt, whether that's, whether that's Microsoft core, whether it, that's someone else, like, you know, we, uh, we should yeah. be explicit well, I about think, that. I think if it's a generator, you don't have any, you don't have any, you don't have any choice. You're going to have, the receiver hmm. is going to have to gather all the data and sort when it's done. Well, unless we change the generator to be hmm. something different, well, I mean, you, can, you still change yeah. adapt to Anyway, it sounds um, like you're, you're chatting with Sean about that, which is which is good. Yeah. 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 So I'll, that's one of the questions. Basically, this document I'm building, I'm building a list of questions. That's going to be one of them. Cool. Um, and hopefully, I'll I'll work some of this stuff out. But, um, you know, so I'm kind of glad I'm I'm really I'm focusing on this for a little bit because, you know, I never would have found this otherwise. I thought I was, I thought I was writing my intent wrong for the future. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. For a few time, but I wasn't. I mean, it's actually has a higher intent than current time, but I'm getting current time back. Well, and I, I think that this and like the so. the weird stuff in Pedacious probably, um, you know, explains why we get funky code in even core skills because people through the through the you know the last X number of years have like first done things in the most sane way and then when that didn't work they made these funky workarounds to like just make it work for the time being and then you look at the code and you and you go what the hell were they thinking until you hit well, shit yeah, like this who wants, who wants to mess with the intent <laughs> process, right it's much yeah. easier to just write different intent <laughs> exactly um but yeah i think it's i think it's useful for for us to be like getting into skills in this way um so that we can feel this sort of pain because this is the same pain that that community skill developers are, are feeling as well. So, um, yeah, and I think I think intent parsing is such a core part of what we do that it's important that somebody internally really understands it. You know, it's great that OK does, and it's great that Sean wrote it, but I think somebody internally really needs to know what's going on in there. So, I mean, since I'm in this, <laughs> I've kind of taken it upon myself. But um, Go Chris. we're lucky. Because, we're lucky because Petacious doesn't really work. I've had it match on you know a percent value when i would say change the volume and it misinterpreted it to change the brightness because of the percent like if i say 75 percent or whatever but i've seen it match very rarely at a high confidence level um if it started doing that if we started feeding back to it and started doing that i suspect you would see a whole lot of other hidden problems surface because um, it's the second most important thing we consult besides converse yeah, and Michael made an interesting point. I thought that Pedacious has a different confidence calculating mechanism than Adapt does. Correct. So, are you really comparing apples to apples as far as you know how confident you are that a match is right? Yeah. You know that that's a little concerning to me as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one might argue that so, yeah, if if we ever did use Pedacious properly, what we would need to do is we would need to establish a normalization criteria 
for values coming out of both Podacious and Adapt so that they went through a normalization process, or at yeah. least one of them did to match the other. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're not we're not there yet. So, no, no. so what what I'm so we, yeah I'm, I've been converting a few pedacious intents to adapt because, to me, adapt is actually is, is you know, while I've just found a bug in it, but it's you know it it's it, I think it's more proven. Yeah, you know, we know there's actually probably bigger bugs with you know, more foundational bugs with pedacious that are causing if different problems. So, um, I don't know that I agree with that. I just think it hasn't been trained properly, and it's not getting trained. It's a feedback loop with no feedback. Well, I think it's, I think it, well, I think it's a little greedy. Well, there's, there's a, at least one or two issues that Gez and I have found out about how greedy oh. it can be. Um, um, but yeah. Specifically, but that's like, a harder with thing entities and because stuff. Because it's a neural yeah. network. Yeah. I, it's a harder thing like, to look at and fix in 2001, right? It, it seems like broadly we are moving towards use adapt for most general things and then use pedacious when you have very specific, particularly very short intents that you want to capture um and then that provides the greatest flexibility particularly if we're talking about these sort of more general skills that are always going to sit behind in the background um, um but then it allows you know more specific skills to to utilize you know high confidence pedacious matches to to get in front um which they should be able to like you know we want to answer what what the time is you know anytime someone asks it, but we don't want to capture everything that has the words what and time in it forevermore for only the date time skill. Um, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So well, it's, it's going to be, um, it's going to be a challenge moving forward because our intent matching is basically very flat right now. And until that's corrected, then they're going to clash. Hmm. And yeah. There's some there's some potential solutions out there that we may adopt at some point, but for right now we can make it go with converse and what we got on our hands. We just have to understand the shortcomings of what we're dealing with. And that's what I'm trying to do with adapt. <laughs> so, so I'm sorry that was a long-winded status update, but it's kind of you know it's no, a difficult. No, no, it's really interesting to understand. Yeah. It um, just seems like, I mean. It just seems like that's something that should have surfaced a long time ago, right? Um, maybe, well, but I mean, I, I you know, but the, in this case, I'm replacing a pedacious intent with a adapt intent. Uh, and pedacious intent might have just, you know, yeah, had a high confidence yeah. level before and, and beat it out, right? Sure. Yeah. All right. And as as Gez said, you know, maybe it had happened before, and people have just implemented workarounds in their skill or. or Structured their intents a certain way to get around it, to rather than mm. you know, rather than do you know, spend the, the three days I spent, <laughs> you know, dig, deep digging into adapt and how and how core deals with the results that adapt gives it. <laughs> well, the other thing is when you disable barge and then you become a single threaded application and it's not that difficult to work with that, but when you yeah. enable barge in and you allow all these permutations, now you have all the intent clashes that you didn't anticipate before because you would never have them because you would never be able to interrupt these things. So, yeah, it's all tied in. Yeah. So that's me. I'm, I'm probably will be another day in intent will land. And then um, I'll share you with you guys my, the results of my work and then I'll move back to the timer scale. Cool. Cool. Um, oh, can you do the, if you're, if you're switching things can you um chuck in the api methods on the weather skill too or can we is the weather skill ready to merge is that uh the only thing you know i talked about this really the only thing i'm missing is some unit tests oh yeah i could add those in, in, in the next work if we're going to do another pass in these i could add that in the next pass yeah um and we can just merge what i have which is pretty substantial yeah yeah um you know, I think yeah, that, that was the only thing blocking that pr from being approved i mean yeah because we, we do want to have it as the, the sort of example skill that we point people to. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, if we can if we can throw some of those in, that'd be cool. Because um, yeah, it's it's significantly better for the for the Mark II. So um, cool. Or we can put it up up there and, and not call it the shining example until I get a chance to add unit tests. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, if you're happy for you me know. to, like everyone's been using it. I think it's been battle tested. So. Um, yeah, I haven't had any problems with it personally. Um, maybe, but I developed it. So. Right, well, <laughs> with your guys. 
The current my, weather skill we're talking about? Yeah. My my the, yeah, my rework of it. Make weather uh, great again. I think it has bugs, but I think we should just go ahead and, and release it in its current incantation because then we need to get it into Derek's hands and he can do more extensive testing, you know, user usability testing and things like that and give us better direction. In other words, my point is I don't see us not committing it, progressing any further. But if mm. you commit it, I believe we will progress further. And I believe it has work to be done to it. But I believe that oh, yeah. become, I believe that will become more obvious once people are using it and giving us feedback. So yeah, yeah. I agree completely. The current VK test for me is in a better shape than it was before. The current VK yeah. test passed. I, I took a bunch of X fails out that are now passing. So it's it's in better shape. But yeah, it definitely needs more work. And the time zone stuff in there is definitely better well the interaction stuff is where it's uh not shining um yeah. if you tell it to stop what happens if it gets interrupted what happens yeah. what happens well if that was never in there in the first place yeah, but what yeah. happens if we you tell it to start again while oh, it's right. in the middle? yeah how yeah. does it interact with common play framework and my point is you're not going to yeah. see all of this until you get it released and then people can run with it and then they can say oh gee how are we going to fix this and then it's okay because we have those solutions waiting, so it's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah and that's yeah. the plan is to take a second pass at these anyway after we do exactly. some. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So I think yeah. we're not served. We a good first pass. Yeah, we're not served by not releasing it. We we're better served by releasing it and iterating through it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're in agreement, agreement then. All right. Well, I'll yeah, merge yeah. that then, and then you can add the unit tests later, and then we can also add the API things at any time at that point. That means. I think I noticed on the wiki skill that I was not drawing from 20.08 anymore. I was drawing from 21.02, which is good. Yep. Um, if there, if there is, if you do run into a skill that doesn't have a 2102 branch, then feel free to add it. But yeah. What was yep. that? Sorry, Derek. Oh yeah. So we we're gonna have to when we cross this bridge of you know the next pass, we're gonna have to come up with ways to to do VK tests for all of these. You know, things we've been talking about, like interrupting a skill and um, skills interactions between multiple skills and stuff. You know, the VK tests are really kind of written like you're just staying in your lane here and just you know interacting with one skill. Mm -hmm. um, so there's there's a lot of stuff that's really just not covered in a test. So we'll, we'll have to think about that for the time. Yeah, there, look, this whole project. There's plenty of opportunity for improvement. That's the good news. Yes, <laughs> job security, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Um, I did. I did forget one thing. Um, I finished off the um, the third. Well, the first draft of the the third party licensing policy. Ah. Um, if you feel like having a look at that, it's uh, you know, if you if you know about any licenses and and have a look at where they exist, it, it started out with just the same categories as, as Apache where A, B and A, B and X essentially, but, um, it's kind of branched out to four. So I won't bother going through it because licensing is going to take us down a four hour conversation, but, uh, but <laughs> well, I'll grab a bottle of wine and sit in front of the fireplace with my wife tonight and we'll go through it. There you go. <laughs> so romantic. I love it. Um, <laughs> But but the at least um, <laughs> at the very least have a look at the four like what the four categories are and and see that they make sense because I think I think there's two sides to it you know one is like does the structure of the policy make sense from a you know from a developer perspective is that actually going to make sense for using it and and then separately like are all the licenses in the right place and that's the freaking hard part that you know yeah. Cool. All right. Are we done? I think so. I think so. Thanks See everybody everyone. this time tomorrow. See you tomorrow. More fun and frivolity. Yeah. <laughs>